Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome to the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Whether it is your first time here or your last time here or somewhere in between, I appreciate that you are here right now to discuss everything that has gone on in the last eight days of the Toronto Blue Jays. Can you believe it's only been eight days since the Blue Jays lost to the Twins in the wild card round of the playoffs? 2-0 in a sweep. It's only been eight days. It was last Wednesday, but it feels like everything has happened in Blue Jays land. Let's start with today's news. Mark Shapiro, president of the Toronto Blue Jays, spoke to the media today and confirmed that Ross Atkins will be back as general manager of the Toronto Blue Jays next season. Ross will be back as GM. First of all, I think in general, uh, in sports organizations, stability and continuity are a competitive advantage. Um, and that's a general statement that doesn't apply unequivocally. Um, but when evaluating, you're not evaluating on a series or even a season. Um, and in Ross's case, the body of work um, to me is in, in undeniable. You know, there's over eight seasons, whether it's the last four having the sixth best record in the American League, whether it's three of the last four years in the postseason, uh, building out great resources, hiring great leadership team that's been successful both internationally and domestically. Um, we need to get better. Ross needs to get better, but he's done a good job and certainly deserves and put us in good position next year to be a, a very good team and certainly deserves that opportunity to continue to lead the, the baseball organization. Where Mark Shapiro and I differentiate in thinking, and Mark Shapiro is a much smarter man than I am, but where we differentiate in thinking is I don't think the results are there to bring back Ross Atkins. See, Mark Shapiro in that clip said the body of work is there. Like everything is built. He's, he's very happy with, with what Ross Atkins has built in terms of the, the players that they've had, the collection of talent that can compete every season they collected 89 wins this year it's obviously very successful on paper but i look at the simple result with my small brain and the small brain way i think i look at since 2016 the toronto blue jays have not won a playoff game as simple as that is I think that is a failure, and I think that is enough time for a general manager to win a playoff game with this payroll, with the amount of resources that the Toronto Blue Jays put into their lineup, with the amount of freedom that Ross Atkins has to make decisions, with everything we've seen in terms of the collection of talent that he's traded away and brought in. I think they should have won a playoff game since 2016, and Ross Atkins has not done that. And this year was so incredibly frustrating in a way where they said every day, that the hitting would get going and it never did. And this felt like the tipping point of the organization where it's, hey, what we're doing is not working. We've seen the results finally, and they are not successful. We need to move in a different direction. But obviously, we did not get that today. But this press conference by Mark Shapiro comes on the heels of Ross Atkins' press conference last Saturday, this past Saturday, where he caused a big storm in Toronto media and amongst Blue Jays fans when he seemingly threw John Schneider under the bus for the decision to pull Barrios from the game. Those meetings are John Schneider's meetings. He has a group of individuals that he prepares with every day. His process routine, his preparation was no different that day. Uh, the group is the staff that's on the field. It's not the front office. I do not attend these meetings and I certainly do not make those decisions. When that decision occurred, I found out about it when you did. Uh, when you say it was getting warm in the first inning, it was obviously very clear that we had a strategy to potentially deploy. There was no plan to concretely deploy that. John Schneider made that decision to deploy that, and <clears throat> that, that's, what, that's what occurred. What you just heard was a general manager taking zero accountability for what happened on the field. In the, in the clip I'm about to play from today's press conference with Mark Shapiro, you will hear a grown adult explain the situation, what happened, the thinking behind it, the understanding that everybody from himself, Mark Shapiro, downwards, including Ross Atkins, John Schneider, everybody in the stats department behind him, understood the plan going in. And John Schneider just executed the plan at a certain point within the game. Ross Atkins, in that clip on Saturday, decided to say, I don't know. It was John Schneider's decision. I had no involvement with it. Everybody who's mad right now, don't be mad at me. I had no hand in this. That's what he tried to get away with saying. 
and nobody was buying it. Nobody said, oh yeah, we'll just continue to pester John Schneider. No. From that morning press conference, things have taken a turn with Ross Atkins, and I don't know if there's an opportunity to ever turn it back. We know who he is now when the chips are on the table, when things are hard, when the team is at its lowest point it's been in in so long. This is a very successful Blue Jays team in terms of the wins they put up this season. 89 wins is a lot of wins in a tough AL East. But this season was one of the most frustrating seasons that the Blue Jays have ever had. And our GM, after one of the worst managerial decisions in franchise history, and the moment when the entire baseball community is clowning on our franchise, and we're just looking for any kind of explanation, any kind of, hey, this is what happened. And I'm about to, I'll get to the clip of Mark Shapiro explaining perfectly kind of what went down, what goes, what goes into a decision like pulling Barrios and, and what actually happened and why it happened in that way. When we're looking from that, from Ross Atkins, he wasn't able to do it. And it's going to be so difficult for him to come back to this franchise next year and the year after and who knows however long and just look at, look at us in the eye and say, I know what I'm doing. You should trust me in building this team because I don't know as a fan that I can trust Ross Atkins ever again. Look at what happened this entire season. Look at what happened with this one move that's a microcosm of everything that's gone on with this organization. And you can't help but to lose a lot of faith in this GM. Now, I've been going off on a little bit of a tangent while I'm supposed to be getting to Mark Shapiro now speaking about the decision to pull Barrios in a very eloquent way, which I think explains a little bit more of the thinking behind what went on. I knew the game plan. I knew a possible. I knew the, the purpose behind it. I was aware of it, and knew that the goal was to bring Kikuchi in to turn over the lineup and get, um, you know, their, you know, to get some of their left-handed hitters out of the lineup for better matchups later in the game, which actually worked. But I didn't know when it would happen, so I found out at the same moment in time when John walked to the mound. I was in Schneid's office uh, the day after we got eliminated when we flew home with Don Mattingly, with Schneids, and with Ross. And, and Don Mattingly said he was kind of miffed at, you know, the reaction to, to the game planning um, and the preparation. He said our planning and preparation was identical for that game as it was for the 162 games during the season. The process wasn't any different. Um, but I think that what has come to light is both from the information and the planning, by the way, which is, is was a was designed by and that led by John Schneider, uh, but we have to be more clear with our players, more transparent, do a better job of communicating um, what that process is. And, and then most importantly, if there's a line of demarcation when it comes into the game, that the decisions lie with our staff and with John. Do you think that he should have owned the decision more as an organizational one? Because I think from our perspective and the fans' perspective, it felt like he kind of put the onus on Schneider a little bit. Yeah. And I just wondered, like, does that create awkwardness between them two, or can you? I know there's like no that? awkwardness between the two because I've been involved in enough conversations with him over the last couple of days. Um, yeah, I think Ross tr Ross was giving a, an in-depth, you know, window into the process, and then you know, also clarifying that there's a clear line of demarcation when it comes to in-game decision making. So, but I would say this: when it comes to like accountability, and it comes to you know results and outcomes that are disappointing. Um, a, we're not ever looking to assign blame, just like we're not looking to have take credit for an individual something that's individually successful. And when something goes wrong, um, accountability lies at the top. It lies with me, responsibility. But we all we're not looking to say that you know John Schneider made a mistake or Ross made a mistake or who made the mistake. We made a mistake. You know, it didn't work, and we'll need to learn and get better from it. But you know, we need to be okay making mistakes. I'm more than confident in John Schneider's ability to manage a Major League Baseball game. And as I replied to Rosie, I'm more than confident in Ross's ability to run a baseball operation. Now, that doesn't mean we don't need to get better. It doesn't mean we didn't make mistakes. Um, if you had said to me, we're going to score two runs, I uh, hold the Twins to two runs in that game before the game, didn't say anything the way it transpired, but said we're going to hold them to two runs, I would have thought we were going to win the game. So it's not why we lost. You know, we lost because we didn't hit, because we made a base running mistake. You know, those are the reasons we lost. So, and I can't remember a season that was 
felt like it was more of an effort. I'm happy to know after these press conferences that there is actually an adult in the room. And Mark Shapiro, I think, was very fair in that clip there in what he was saying. And he's very right at the end of it in that if the Blue Jays score any kind of runs, and I've been hammering this point for weeks, if they score even a modicum of runs, just cash in some of those runners in scoring positions, don't make the worst base running mistakes anybody has ever seen. The game is completely different. And it didn't ultimately come down to the decision to pull Barrios because the Blue Jays couldn't score any runs. So who cares what you do with the pitching staff? But there is an explanation for what went on in that moment where the entire baseball world was confused. I'm glad that we got that out of Mark Shapiro. I am upset that he has not realized that Ross Atkins probably shouldn't be leading this team because I can't trust his decision making. And I'm sh- I'm shocked that Mark Shapiro is going to continue with Ross, Ross Atkins after seeing his decision making this season and the way he leads the baseball club. That, I think, is the most important thing. The way he's been leading this organization from the outside looking in. Obviously, I'm not within it. Obviously, I'm only judging by the things we see, but by the things I've seen with my eyes and the way this entire 162 plus two games played out. I have very little faith in the leading capabilities of Ross Atkins. I would have let him go from his job. That's not my decision to make. So he is still in the role and we will go into this Blue Jays offseason with a whole bunch of questions and a very interesting team to watch. And, And I think it's funny how in 2023, Toronto sports teams, general managers have just caused all kinds of havoc with their press conferences. Kyle Dubas, first of all, in, in the, with the Leafs, and now Ross Atkins with the Blue Jays. I hope Bobby Webster is practicing with his PR team on how to handle a press conference uh, when the Raptors ultimately have a very rocky season. All right, that's, that's it on the Jays talk for today. I want to do a quick what's happening where I check in on what's happening on SDPN and I check in with you on what's happening in your life. And today I'm going to head over to the Discord server, the SDPN Discord server. Go to sdpn.ca to join us on Discord. I'm going to go over to the JBSR questions channel where Nico wrote. So at this point, who on the Jays should stay? I think we should do a episode entirely devoted on what the Jays should do in free agency. Maybe I'll bring on a guest for that one, what the Jays should do on free agency and and if they have to make any moves uh, going forward this off season. I think that'll be a fun one, Nico. So I'll have that for you in a couple of weeks. Free agency, uh, they're in the middle of the playoffs. Free agency is a little, little ways away still. Still got to play out the playoffs. Holy crap, the Dodgers. I feel... <laughs> That's that's awful the way they blew that to the Diamondbacks and the Houston Astros are one of the most underrated dynasties in in sports right now. They've been to seven straight league championship series is very impressive stuff by the Astros. But yeah, I'll have a who stays and who goes from the Blue Jays episode, I think, coming out soon. And then uh, JBR star discussion channel on our discord. I got a comment here from JDD who said now that Max Max for stopping got his third title. Max Verstappen won his third title in F1 this season. If you were not following along with F1, JDD writes, now that Max Verstappen got his third title, when are we going to get a JBR, JBSR episode where Jesse puts an asterisk on all three of Max's title? Get Tim on as well. Tim Haraney, our F1 guy, as well to get a rise out of him. I think that might be a fun episode, but like, I think I can boil it down to he has a better car than everybody. He's a great driver. Don't get me wrong. Don't get my words twisted. Max Verstappen is the best driver in the game right now in F1. Nobody is out driving Max Verstappen. But he also has the best car. How much of it is the car? How much of it is is Max? That, I think, is a very fair discussion. One that we might have on this podcast. All right. Oh, and then checking in on what's happening in SDPN. We launched a new podcast this week. It is called The Basu and Godin Notebook. 
It is a Montreal Canadiens podcast. If you're a fan of the Montreal Canadiens, it is all Montreal Canadiens coming to you twice, twice a week. Uh, Mark Antoine Godin and Arpon Basu, they used to both work at The Athletic, and now they, they uh, work at different places now, but now they both work at STPN. And they used to do a podcast previously. They used to have an article blog together previously and all that kind of shuttered. But so now we've reunited them on our network, and we've brought back the podcast. So the Basu and Godin Notebook, Montreal Canadiens podcast, it's, if you're a fan of the Canadians, it's a go-to every week, twice a week. Search for it on your favorite podcast app. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, it is on this YouTube channel. That is it for me today. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be listening or watching this podcast right now. I don't do this very often, but hit like on this video. Hit subscribe on the channel if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app, give this podcast a five-star rating or whatever, five I think they all do five. So Spotify does like five stars. Apple does like five stars. Leave it a good comment if you want to comment on it. Comments always help grow the show. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you for listening. I will see you very soon. Good night from Toronto. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.